Good morning. Welcome to Christ the King's morning prayer service. This is Thursday, August 8th. The opening sentence is from Psalm 43. Oh, send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. The Confession of Sin on page 12. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. We say together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. Apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent. According to your promises, declare to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins through repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Venite. We say together, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. We'll now have the psalm readings. The psalms appointed for today are Psalms 92 and 93, uh, beginning in your prayer book on page 390. We will read these by whole verse. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto your name, O Most High. To tell of your loving kindness early in the morning and of your faithfulness in the night season. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the lute, with the sound of melody upon the harp. For you, Lord, have made me glad by your deeds, and I will shout for joy because of your handiwork. O Lord, how glorious are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. The dull of heart does not consider this, and a fool does not understand it. Though the ungodly are as green as the grass, and though all the workers of wickedness flourish, they shall be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are the most high forevermore. For lo, your enemies, O Lord, lo, your enemies shall perish, and all your workers of wickedness shall be destroyed. But my horn shall be exalted like the horns of wild bulls, for I am anointed with fresh oil. My eye also shall see its desire upon my enemies, and my ear shall hear with joy the end of the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They also shall bring forth fruit in their old age, and shall be green and full of sap. That they may show how upright the Lord is my rock in whom there is no unrighteousness. And Psalm 93, the Lord is king and has put on glorious apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and girded himself with strength. He has made the round world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The floods have risen, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods have lifted up their waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord who dwells on high is mightier. 
Your testimonies, O Lord, are very sure. Holiness adorns your house forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> Our lesson today is a reading from St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans, beginning with the 8th chapter, the 18th verse. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us when our, in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us. He also did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, he was raised. Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is um, on, can be found on page 82. It's the Quarite Dominum, seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth and bring forth, bringing forth life and growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that for, for which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and um, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
And then we have the Apostles' Creed on page 20. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. The Collect of the Day. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your grace that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On Thursdays, our particular prayer focus is on the Diocese of the Southwest. Holy Father, Heavenly King, we praise you and worship you for your love for us. Lord, I would lift up the individual parishes, many of which are small and, and needy in our diocese. I pray, Lord, for all of the priests and support personnel. I pray for the, the priests that are aging out. I pray for the brand new priests with little... Uh, uh, mentorship and support. And Lord, I pray for all the people that are working in our diocese. Minister to them, bring what they need into their, into their churches, support them, strengthen them, hedge them round about with protection and peace. Yes, Lord, we, <clears throat> we do ask you to uh, bless our bishop, Bishop Stephen. <clears throat> and the men who give him counsel, uh, bless the small churches in their diocese, and some of them have priests who are uh, ill and undergoing treatment, and we ask you, Lord, to especially encourage those congregations, uh, the priests who are close to them geographically, encourage them to step up and uh, reach over and help out. And I don't know what parishes these are, but you do, Lord. I ask you to encourage the people of those parishes and the priests around about them to, to do what they can to help <clears throat> and to remind us to keep these parishes in our prayers. Uh, we are a huge, huge diocese. It spans two countries, two languages. And um, show us, Lord, how you would have us be about your work things we can do to help each other certainly praying for each other is something we can do each day and remind us of christ the king each day to keep father pete and beth in our prayers father kyle and becky and their families in our prayers deacon bill and norma but to hold these men up who have answered your call to keep them every day in our prayers all these things we ask in your name
We continue the prayer on page 26, prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you've given us grace this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.